gorgeous. Okay, let me see. I'm intrigued. I have aspirations of. There we go. Okay, stay. <laughs> okay, so uh, I worked so hard on this. This is, isn't this incredible? This, yeah. My gorgeous work of art that I will tell you about in a moment here. So, in this series, Get It, the concept of Get It and the theme verse comes from a verse of scripture that says that in this life we want to not just run to participate, but that we want to run to win, to get it, to get the prize. And it's speaking about spiritual things because the spiritual leads everything else in our lives. So with that in mind, I'm going to in the next, um, I don't know how long, but more than one week, I'm going to be teaching one of the keys to getting it that's so powerful that it can change your life in moments. It's called Renewed Mind in God's Word. Renewed Mind is the key to power. We're going to see it. We're going to try some of it in the meditation. It's an area of life that I've been growing into because the more and more you grow to renew your mind to God's Word, the more powerful and life-giving it is. So I want to take you to a section of Scripture in Romans 12 and in verse 2. Oops. love this verse. He's just excited about the verse. God's word, man. It's delish, delish. Okay. Romans 12, 2, it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, I want to break this down a little bit because the Bible says that the world is owned and run right now by Satan, not by God. God's not in control. The Bible says Satan is right now. And so we see a beautiful world that God created. But we also see hard things, right? And, you know, we see pain. We see suffering. There's discouragement. There's so many things that beat us down in life. And so this is specifically, it's talking about... Don't be conformed to this world. If we are passive and don't get it with renewed mind, our minds will be molded by the world, and it's not a good thing. To be passive, most of us do not spend enough time thinking about what we're thinking about. We're too passive when it comes to where our thoughts go. We're not deliberate enough. We act as if, they just are what they are, you know? But the Bible says that if we are passive, that we're going to get molded like clay, like my little clay figure here, <laughs> that we're going to get molded by the world. And then it says, in contrast, that transformed is that beautiful Greek word metamorphosis. Oops. It's not listening to me. Okay is metamorphosis, which is the transformation where you see this gorgeous transformation. It's, it's from a caterpillar to a butterfly. It says that we can be radically transformed from wherever we are right now of maybe the places we don't want to be. I bet that there's some places, just think about it in your life, that feel more like a caterpillar than a butterfly. You know? that feel limited, that feel not so great, right? But we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind, by, by, and the renewing of our mind is not just thinking positive, it's changing our thoughts to think God's word. God's word is more powerful than just positive thinking because God's behind it. There's power in it. We're talking about thoughts that are supernatural that will transform you. That in a moment, you can go when you change your mind from being conformed to the world to being transformed by the renewing of your mind, putting God's word on in your mind that lifts you up in a moment. We're good. Okay. So I want to just kind of walk you through this because 
Satan's not a fan of yours. It says Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and especially where he's the most aggressive, is trying to do anything he can to keep you away from God because there is power in walking with God and with his son, Jesus Christ. That there's power in that. So I want to, because here's the thing. When you're passive, the world man, Satan, beats you down. You know, really. I mean, think about how often we're going to just look at one part of Renewed Mind today about some of the things, because Satan's called the accuser. And then the Bible speaks about the fact that he hits you with fiery darts, thoughts that destroy you and tear you down. Things like, you're not good enough. Things like, you don't deserve God's love. Things like, I can't. We're constantly being attacked and assaulted, aren't we? By the world around us, by things that beat us down. You know, if we're passive, we're constantly getting beaten down. I can't do it, I can't do it, I'm not good enough, right? Thoughts of shame, thoughts of failure. Why should I hope at all? It's never worked before. I don't deserve anything good. I've screwed up too much. I've fallen too short. I can't have a good relationship. I never have before. I just need to take what comes my way. Right? So many things where Satan, and you can, you know, you can't probably see this. This is my little. But when we're passive and don't renew our minds, we're going to take on the imprint of whatever the world is throwing at us. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So there are places he has stolen from you. There are places he has robbed you from being all that God called you to be. This clay is a little bit tougher because it probably renewed its mind or something. So <laughs> that's why I had to whack it kind of hard. You know, it wasn't quite doing my demonstration because it's kind of hard clay. You know. Um, but the passive is being formed, is being molded. We don't need to be molded, you know? Refuse to be molded. Refuse to be molded. Let's say that. I refuse to be molded. I refuse to be molded. I can renew my mind. I can renew my mind. Let's say that one. I can renew my mind to God's word. Putting on God's word is life-giving. It's one of the reasons it's so important to feed our minds on God's word. Because God is in it. It's more than positive thinking. Because you ever notice, uh, you know, positive thinking, you know, it's better than being negative. I have to say that, right? You know, if you're going to choose, you know. But positive thinking in and of itself is not, it's got limited power, limited ability. I am so beautiful. Everybody likes me. Did you ever notice if you tried that, how long that lasts? <laughs> right? Did you ever try that? You see the little affirmate, the girl in front of the affirmations in the mirror? <laughs> Everybody loves me and I'm beautiful and, you know, that kind of thing. Hey, it's better than being negative. But God's word is powerful. It's life-giving. So, I want to take you to... Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Oh, you know what? Actually, I want to just, before I read that one, uh, I, I forgot. The, the last part of this verse is really great, too. That instead of being conformed to the world, we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We prove that God is good. How cool is that? We see that God's will is good for us when we renew our minds. How cool is that? And other people will see it too because they're going to see the fruit of it. You know, it's so cool because sometimes I know in our, in our journey and it was that way for me that there are times where I wasn't so sure that God's will was just all good for me. Like the song, you're good, good, right? Susan said we can think that. 
You ever have those doubts? Maybe God doesn't know what's good for me. You know, I definitely thought that for many years in the area of relationships, and hence my relationships were pretty bad for many, many years. They were really toxic in the area of romantic relationships because I figured I knew way more than God in that area of my life. <laughs> it was not so true. But when we renew our minds and we do God's word, we go, wow, this was really good. When I got to the bottom, when it came to relationships and got so desperate because I was so hurt and what I was doing wasn't working, I was like, well, let me just try what God says in his word a little bit and see how that works. I'm like, my God is good. <laughs> it totally turned my life around in a way that I really thought was impossible. It's amazing. Went from just starting down that journey with God of having horrible, hurtful, destructive relationships three years later, meeting my wonderful husband and having an incredible marriage and now being happily married for 17 years. God is good. Amen. Amen. God's word is good, man. It's better than positive thinking. This stuff is like powerful. It says the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. For uh, 2 Corinthians, oops, that's on 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 10. Here's another one. And in verse 5, it says, casting down, that's throwing it down to the ground, arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God. Bringing every thought. How many thoughts? Every, every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Make your mind behave. You know? Make your mind behave. You might not be able to stop a thought from entering it, but you get to decide if it stays there or not. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? You can't think two things at the same time. Just try right now. I'll watch. Just try. Try thinking two things at the same time. When, when one of you figure that out, raise your hand. Okay, one of the keys to renewing your mind and taking captive every thought is you can replace a thought with God's word. It's putting on the knowledge of God that's life-giving. I'm going to just give you some stuff. That's why we need to spend time in the word, guys. We want our... I, I, I've got a friend of mine. Wow, I'll cry thinking about it. Who I've known for 10 years who... Um, you know how you have friends for a long time that you love them and you're just like, if you would just come to know Jesus, man. Ten years. Go, if you would just come know Jesus, he's going to save your life, really. It's going to change your life so radically. And um, so I finally he's hit a bottom in his life and he's been doing this. He's been like, I've got him praying and meditating every day. He's going to move here so he can be a part of Searchlight. He's come visit a few times, wants to do the ambassador program. It's just like uh, Cena, in case you guys know Cena. Um, but he's seeing it, you know? He's seeing it because he's trying to make some major changes in his life that are really, really hard. But he's seeing that just spending time, he's listening to podcasts every day. You know, on the search, Searchlight um, iTunes thing and on YouTube, he's just every day, he's feeding on the Word. And his, cha his mind is changing the way he's thinking, the way he's relating, the fact that he's trusting God and not himself. And so all of these, the changes are getting where they're not so hard and the things, you know, the, the, some of the destructive things in his life are just falling away. It's exciting. Casting down. We, see, we, we want to notice when our brain starts thinking some of the things, some of the lies of the wicked one. Some of the lies like, you're not, you know, God doesn't love you. You've messed up too much. You've failed too much. You've let them down. You know? You, you're already Christian. You keep screwing up, maybe. You know? The one, too, is that we're going to look at a lot is the whole thing of areas of saying I can't. You know, I've been, that's one for me because man, I might be deficient in some ways. You know, for me, doing this, of being a pastor, 
feel it is too big for me. It really is. It's too big of a job for me. Like every week I do a sermon, I go, oh, didn't do that, didn't do that. I should have had a better opening, should have had a better closing, should have rallied people that forgot to do this, you know, whatever. In my own ability, you know. But it's not on my ability. We're going to look at one of the, the verses of scripture that I'm giving it away already. That we're going to meditate on today in the renewed mind is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's good. Because I get it that there's so many ways. You know, I'm 58 years old. What the heck am I? Th I'm a woman. There's no women doing this. And, you know, nobody wants to help any women in a way do this. You know, it's just sort of like, you know, I, I get notes from people saying I'm sinning against God for teaching the Bible. Things like that. You know what? I am small, but God is big. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you see? It can't. If I'm just sitting there doing positive thinking, what the heck is that? Oh, you're a great speaker. Oh, right? Isn't that kind of lame? It's kind of lame. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Bam, right? Who cares how small I am? Who cares I'm 58? Who cares I'm a woman? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's His power. It's His mind. Do you see how life-giving? Do you see how different that is than just the rah, rah, rah? You can do it, Nancy. You can do it. Probably not. On my own, no. I can't, actually. I really can't. Life looks so different. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself all the thoughts that exalt itself against what the knowledge, the knowledge of god exalts itself against what the knowledge. the knowledge of god where do you get the knowledge of god Bible. god's word so what do you, you get to choose what are you going to believe god's word or the things that are exalting itself against the knowledge of god we get to choose what we we can replace the lies of the wicked one. Make our mind behave. Make it obey every thought more and more. And you know what? It changes. You, you'll just see like in a moment when you start thinking the word, it changes. I see it during the day. I'll be sitting there going, oh man. You know, I don't blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like I had a crappy opening last week. I lo 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 watched the video. <laughs> you know? I'm like, you know what? God can still work even if I did a crappy opening. Right? Yes. God's still big enough yeah. to work in people's hearts and lives and to change lives whether I got some fancy things to say or not or ever figure out how to say it well. <laughs> it's, I can read God's word. That's got power. Right? You know? Bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. Make it behave. So cool. Okay, let's look at um, Psalm 1. Every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Psalm 1, the middle of your Bible, unless you get too much concordance in the end. Which I do, so that's why it's not in the middle of my Bible. Psalm 1. And in verse 1. It said, blessed is the man, and that's men and women both. Again, the, the word is inclusive. It's just the translators that put man. Blessed is the man, the people, who walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. What is the law of the Lord? God's word. His delight, delight, delight. Not snooze fest. <laughs> this is so not a snooze fest. It's life giving. His delight is in God's word, the law of the Lord. And in his law, in his word, he what? Meditate, stay in night. Why do people go on meditate in church? You know, meditation is powerful. That's why we're doing it in this series. And 
You've seen the power of God, right? In doing the meditations. How, how many people have heard or seen heard from God or seen visions during this meditation? How cool is that, right? How exciting you can be in the presence of God and be transformed. A part of this is in your prayer and meditation to think God's word. I know a lot of you guys, and I, I used to, my prayer started doing this after I was a Christian because I just didn't know any better. You ever get where your prayers were kind of more reminding you about everything that's wrong and you felt more depressed afterwards? <laughs> God, oh, thanks for helping me out with that job and my mean old boss and my terrible marriage and man, wish I could stop yelling at my kids and not, you know, <laughs> or whatever. I don't know, you know. How am I going to pay the bills? And you know, it's just, you know, my car broke down and God, can you have... You, you ever have prayers that sound like that? How life-giving is that, right? Where's God even in the picture of that? Except for you throw his name in there. That's not empowering at all, you know? Some of what can change your prayer life and the faith in your prayer life is in the places in your life. Put God's word. Meditate in God's word. That's what we're just doing here that you guys are hearing from God and you're leaving energized even though maybe during the week you felt a little beat up and then you leave going, right? Zippity doo dah. Um, and in his law, he meditates. How often? Day and night. Is that often? I would say. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit. Remember we talked about fruit. We want to be people that have fruit in its season at the right time is what that's speaking about. That our lives will bear fruit.